Hi, my name is Rebecca Powers with SLCT, and here is what's happening in Sterling and Lancaster. The Hiram O. Taylor Post 189 in Sterling will be hosting their annual meet raffle on February 18th. This will take place at the Eight Point Sportsman's Club at 147 Beeman Road and starts at 1 p.m. Wachusett Music Series presents Pam DeSalt, an evidential medium, February 18th at 1.30 p.m. at the Harvard UU Church, 9 Air Road in Harvard. For more information or tickets, go to www.wachusettmusic.net. The Atlantic Union College is now serving vegetarian lunches to the public. The Chan Shun Dining Commons will be open to the public on Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. For a complete menu and pricing, go to www.auc.edu. There will be an Elder Wellness Clinic on February 13th from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at the Sterling Senior Center. For more information, call 978 422-3032. This is Lex Thomas. I am a proud editor-at-large here at Sterling Lancaster Community Television and I am today visiting with one of my favorite people in town. This is Angela Cody who I actually also really envy because to me she's got a fantastic job. She is the children's librarian at the uh, Sterling Conant Public Library and I don't mean to imply that you spend all your time playing but when I did walk in here today you were doing puzzles and you know so but I'm, I'm sure you do other things as well. Welcome, Angela, and of course, Thank I'm kidding. You. I know how hard you work to make the programs fantastic for the children in the community. Winter Reading Bingo. This is yeah. a kind of bingo I haven't ever heard of. Tell me what Winter, re winter Reading Bingo is all about. Yeah. So we've had a very successful summer reading program. We decided that it might be fun to extend a bit of a challenge for winter reading to keep people um, reading in the winter, help them get through the winter doldrums with a little bit of fun. So we designed a winter reading bingo card and it has categories of books that people read. So um, children and their families can come pick up a card at the uh, children's desk. They don't have to register for the program. They just grab a card and they start reading. So when I say categories, it might be something like read a book with uh, no words or read a book about a mouse. And it could be picture books, it could be novels, it's whatever the children's reading ability is. And for every bingo that the child gets, um, they will get to put a piece up in our story village, which is a lot like our library land from summer reading. Um, so we have a story village bulletin board scene where children have put up penguins, ice skaters, that kind of thing. Um, and if children finish reading the entire card, they get a ticket to enter a raffle to win prizes like uh, Worcester Railers tickets, and uh, we also have tickets to Mount Wachusett, which were donated by both of those, oh, excuse me, of those organizations, so we thank them very much for helping to sponsor this. Now, this seems to me a terrific winter thing, and yeah. it's not quite as intense, I guess you'd say, mm -hmm. as the summer reading program yeah. is, right? So yeah. it's kind of a nice way for kids to keep reading right. and keep, keep working on. Now, yeah. let's see some of these titles here. So, so we've got, let's see, um, all right, yeah, I'll read a book that's been made into a movie, a book about a mouse. Yeah, you're fond of that. Yeah, you can talk I like that one. About, read a book you know, while you eat a snack, I think, is one of them. Yeah. So some, some read a nonfiction book. So you've got a lot of different categories here, which is really nice to, oh, read a mystery story, my personal favorite, um, which is really nice too because I think it introduces kids as well. Don't we tend to sort of kind of get slotted into, okay, this is what I read, and whenever I come to the library, whenever I get out this type of book, or I I tend to go through one author and, right. and read everything I can find. And so this really, you know, it spreads it out. It, it gives people a choice. You can change it up. Very nice. But this isn't the only thing that's going on. No. Uh, and I see oh, here you, you come yeah. uh, with some supplies here. I have props today. You've got props, yeah. I'll tell you. So t uh, we have added um, a playbrary to our library. We wanted to develop our early literacy center even more than just the puppet show and the puzzles. And we thought having uh, more toys for families to be able to use while they're at the library would be a good addition. Um, because play is hard work for children. It's how they learn. So we have these bins um, in a bookshelf that's by the children's desk and families can just grab a bin and play with them. Like this one is our mix and match animals. They're cute little animals. So this one is for younger children. Um, and then we have some toys that 
or a little bit um, more for older children, although kids have really just been grabbing whatever they're interested in. But these are the magnetiles. I don't know if you've seen magnetiles before. Kids love playing and building with them. They're very cool. Um, so we have these. We have a coda pillar, which is a, um, a coding caterpillar toy that's electronic and teaches kids the basics of coding. So, oh, very cool. interesting. Yeah. Now, Angela, just one thing that occurred to me, especially yeah. at this time of the year, mm -hmm. as I, like so many people, have been sniffling for the past number of weeks, yeah. everything here looks just so very clean. Yeah. How? What do you do about this? Because I can imagine yeah. people saying, well, you know, do I really want my kids playing yeah. with this when every other kid in town has been playing with right. it and with colds and whatnot? Right. How do you handle that? Right, so we are wiping down the toys a lot. Like when they've been out and been playing with, we have the those nice little Lysol wipes the, the that we, wipes. we clean them off yes. with, right? Yes. So very frequently, that's yes. something I do during the day and that the evening shift will work right. on. We also have a germ bucket over on the bookshelf. Sorry, I'm pointing to it over there. So if, if especially babies, if toys are put in their mouths, we ask patrons to just put the toy right directly in the, the germ bucket right. so that we know we need to clean those right away. There you yeah. go. So as always, marvelous stuff going on in the children's room here at Sterling. Uh, Conant Public Library, and if like me, if you're an adult without, you know, my, my son is 24 years old, so I'm, I'm not sure that he would really relate to this at this point, mm -hmm. but I guess I can always pick up a neighbor's kid and come over and play, play. play as well for a little yeah. bit of play therapy myself. So, some wonderful winter ideas. Come visit Angela here at Sterling Conant Public Library. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. The Sterling Dull Men's Club will meet on February 6th at 9 a.m. in the Sterling Senior Center. Tom Kokernack will discuss the history of the Sterling Fire Department. For more information, call 978-422-3032. The Sterling and Lancaster Fire Departments would like to remind you to help out by clearing away snow from any fire hydrants near your home. The Sterling Board of Selectmen are looking for volunteers to join the Master Plan Committee and help develop Sterling's new Master Plan. For more information, contact Ross Perry, rperry at sterling-ma.gov or call him at 978-422-8111, extension 2315. The Lancaster Community Center will be hosting a presentation on hoarding. If you or someone you know has trouble downsizing or collects clutter, ClearPath will discuss strategies to help make those tough decisions. This event will take place on February 6th at 9 a.m. For more information, call the center's director at 978-733-1249, extension 1102. I'm Rebecca Powers, and that's what's happening.